won't kill you, but it ain't gonna tickle either. Wanda, I think you hurt Vision's feelings. You locked me in my room. Okay, first, that's an exaggeration. Second, I did it to protect you. Hey, Clint. Hey, man. Clearly, retirement doesn't suit you. You got tired of shooting golf? Well, I played 18. Shot 18. This game seemed to miss. Well, first time for everything. Made you look. Multiple contusions detected. Yeah, I detected that too. What I like is there's all these concentric circles of events that are occurring, and it finally answers the question that I think any rational human being, uh, you know, it begs the question, why doesn't anybody bug out on these Avengers when they, they lay waste to these places while they're saving the world? And I thought, uh, well, cool, it's about time. But then it creates all these new, this new problem set that needs to be addressed. I read uh, the Extremis uh, series, and I was thinking about that from Iron Man 1 through Iron Man 3. Um, the Avengers stuff was always really kind of this colossal ambitious thing but to me the civil war was the kind of it was the smart sexy marvel idea you know um about really having a a rift between two characters that you kind of you don't i don't know you, you don't want to see them you want to see them you know, some friction, but you don't want to see this tear in the fabric of the relationships because you know how pervasive it could be. There's nothing I don't like about them as directors. Um, a, there's just kind of a simpatico with the way that I like to influence things and then step back and really follow their lead. It's just this kind of dance, this creative dance you want to have. And the other thing is it's not like, you know, Anthony's in charge of talent and Joe takes care of all the technical stuff. I mean, they're, they're like, you know, they're both, they're, there's a lot of alacrity and they're both really versatile individually. I think people are really gonna be pleasantly surprised and intrigued by the journey of the choices that Cap makes and the fact that you kind of stay with them. It's familiar and easy to kind of go on, on the Tony serendipitous hero side we're always going to mess a bunch of things up but his heart's in the right place and and you kind of wonder like where is cap's heart right now now that we find her again and after all we know from you know what's happened in avengers 2 um you know she has a greater calling um and i think that's what makes this character really heroic is that she's kind of dug her heels in and said look you know i could kind of go down this road um which would be the more desirable road personally um, and, and, you know, kind of disappear and live off the map and, and, you know, everybody kind of have what everybody wants, um, you know, but she chooses this kind of greater calling. And, and in this film, we really see her kind of move closer to a kind of leadership position. I think that, um, Natasha sees Black Panther as someone with a lot of potential. Um, you know, I think she sees him as someone who's smart, emotionally grounded, um, and unexpected, um, and highly skilled, uh, and she's interested in him, um, she's interested in recruiting him, I think she sees him as someone with a lot of potential. I cannot imagine anybody but Chris playing this role, it's really, it's a very difficult role to play because on one hand, you know, you have this character that's has this very strong moral compass and you know, is very righteous um, and that can be you know you try to think where's the conflict in that you know conflict is what makes characters interesting um, but I think that you know Chris has added this you know I don't know he's almost grounded this character in something very human